videos, uh, a bunch of my old videos are available here on my YouTube channel. Um, and I will upload this one there as well. So um, um, probably later today. Um, you can download all my scripts from here. This page actually, my blog, it actually points you to, the, to GitHub. So I've put all my scripts to GitHub. Um, and I just, like an hour ago, I pushed um, a few updates to my Ash scripts. Okay, so uh, you can get this from there. Let me just quickly show my blog. Oh, actually, here you go. You go to my blog and downloads. Well, this is where I where you get the scripts. Um, okay, agenda at a glance is this that this is a fast-paced hacking session. I'll just run a bunch of commands and demos from command line and let's just see if they work, right? Sometimes the demos fail. So this is not training, you know, this is not like formal training with structure and, and slides and preparation. It's a hacking session, right? Um, and um, uh, these are the scripts what I plan to talk about. Um, that how do I use Ash, right? Um, usually from command line, right? Um, so. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time talking about what is Ash um, because that's like a whole di different session. Um, but basically, active session history is like a performance history or activity history of an Oracle database. And you see, one good way to how do you remember it is, is that, you know, these three words, active session history, if you can say the same thing in reverse as well, this is basically like a sampled history of sessions then that happen to be active during the sampling right so all these three words have a meaning right uh, so that means that sessions that happen to be not active or or inactive during sampling these these will not be recorded right idle sessions are not recorded in ash by default okay but anyway so if you want to learn more about ash in general i mean you, you can obviously the first thing probably is to go to Oracle documentation, right? And, uh, and re read about that. But if you wanna go a bit deeper about understanding its architecture and so on, then, and then uh, uh, look into this presentation. So this is uh, by the guys who pretty much built Ash and, um, and, uh, or invented Ash. And um, it has some good info in it, you know, that how did you Ash math and how do you calculate stuff and how do you not calculate stuff on Ash and so on. Okay. So, and the visual overview uh, would be this, that um, um, basically the stuff that you see in, in the enterprise manager screens, this very nice looking and very helpful screens for drilling down into performance. This is just queries against Ash. You know, this chart you see here and this breakdown you see here, these are different, uh, uh, different queries which count the number of Ash samples and they group by something. So for example, the height, you know, uh, the height of this uh, peak in this chart, this is actually, you know, this um, data points sort of for this um, uh, peak. So on this chart, it just come from counting of Ash. So apparently during this second or minute or time interval, uh, when we counted Ash records for this time interval, we found a lot of active uh, sessions at that time, right? And on, you know, and when, it, when we normalize the number of ash records we found, uh, or the number of active ash, well, the number of active <laughs> session records we found from ash, um, when we normalize it to per whatever the time unit here is, we'll see that it was at that point on average, at, at that time range on average, we had 12 sessions or over 12 sessions, which were actively doing something, right? So you don't sum some ash records, you count them. That's how it works. That's how sampling works, right? Um, so, and this presentation I linked to uh, on the previous slide that explains in more detail how this thing works. Okay. Um, by the way, if you have any questions, then just type them in at any point of time. All right. So, um, then, in, you know, the second thing you see here is, uh, is uh, you know, like some of this time is spent on, on disk I.O. You know, this is the user I.O. weight class. 
and a bit of the time is spent on you know being on CPU. So that basically is just a group by weight class. You know, you go to the active session history view and you group by weight class, you know, this is this is what you get. Okay. So give me a second. By the way, let me ask one th thing. Uh, can, can you hear me okay? So I haven't seen any feedback. So just making sure that everybody's online and can hear me. Okay, thanks very much. I already see many people say yes. Thank you very much. And now I have to click on all the people and make this uh, comments go away. So thanks very much. Okay, no need to type in anymore. I know that you hear me. Okay, or at least some of you hear me. Yeah. Uh, all right. So, um, all right. Yeah. So this is just a group by from Ash and, and, um, uh, you know, how do we get the time series chart? Well, this is just a group by sample time from Ash or group by, uh, group by, um, uh, you know, like the minute of the timestamp and stuff like that. Right. So, and, uh, you know, when you move this little slider back and forth, right, then, this just changes the where sample time in Ash in the Ash table is is between a different time range, right? And then the, the drill down here will do a further group by group by SQL ID, and then it does a group by you know weight class again as well that you know that you you know be able to show this colorful um, bar chart here, right? And here when you pick top sessions, you will get group by session ID and stuff like that. Okay, so uh, so this is how you do. This is how you query Ash. You count records from Ash, and you do group by and you filter by different columns based on what you want, right? And um, and uh, um, you know, and this is exactly what Ash top does, right? So I see a couple of questions already. Um, so. So when you look into uh, so so the the um, so I don't want to spend too much time explaining the um, the basics of Ash. So look into this uh, uh, presentation, right, uh, or attend my training, right. So that's that's also a valid thing to say. Um, but um, so this the V dollar view is an in memory array. You know when you query. Um, Well, I got to log in. Let me just log into the uh, container database because SGA stat doesn't show everything in the PDB. So that's, you know, that's a different topic. So you see, and when, you, when I query V dollar SGA stat, there is like eight megabytes in, in this whole instance uh, allocated for Ash buffers, right? And that depends on how many, you know, what's your, how many CPUs you have. And I think what's your sessions parameter and stuff like that as well. So Oracle estimates that uh, how long time, I mean, how, how much memory would it need to keep Ash information around in memory in this V dollar view for at least one hour, right? So, when you look into the Ash related parameters, you know, you'll see a lot of, uh, um, uh, so, you know, there is Ash size is, uh, is uh, uh, the parameter which, you know, supposedly sets how much Ash memory will be allocated. But, you know, this is one meg, but we actually had eight megs. So it's either, uh, I, I think it's just, uh, it's, this is like a minimum, or, or Oracle has actually calculated a bigger value, right? So uh, Ash is enabled and so on. And, you know, by default, Ash is sampled every 1000 milliseconds, right? The in memory, so basically the, the session state in V$ session is sampled every every one second, every thousand milliseconds. And you know, you don't you don't change this stuff, right? So don't don't break it, right? Um, so and um, and since Oracle 11.2, you have this uh, um, a view called Vidor Ash Info, which tells you what's the Ash size in memory, and it says you know sampling every second. And apparently, you know, uh, you see my time is about uh, twelve o'clock, right? But this uh, 
the oldest sample in memory currently is, uh, you know, from two hours ago. So, so I guess I don't have enough activity to flush out old records or to overwrite old records, uh, you know, too soon. So I actually have a bit more info. But Ash, you know, aims to keep one hour of history. It's not a guarantee, but it aims to keep one hour of history in memory, right? Okay. You know, and, and then the, when you query it, it's V$ active session history, right? Oops, let me just do it once more. V$ active session history samples a lot of information that, like, what was the wait event during this time, right? When we sampled, we, we looked for all active sessions. We checked, okay, you know, um, uh, and, and whenever we found an active session, when we sampled, then we recorded, okay, what was the session ID? What was the serial number of that session? What was, uh, uh, you know, was it the background or foreground session? Um, what was the SQL um, uh, ID executed? You know, um, what is the SQL operation name? Was it the select or update or delete? Um, and, you know, I'm going to use a bunch of these columns. And even to the point that when you were running PLSQL, it actually tells you the PLSQL package object ID. You know, you can do all kinds of Ash queries based on that. Okay. So, and now what, if we were waiting for something, what was the wait event, right? And if we were waiting for something, what was, were the parameter one, two, three values and so on. So you see Ash has a lot of, lot of details, which we can use, right? A lot of, it's like a fact table where, where, uh, where the fact that the record exists in Ash uh, means one second of response time. Okay, so Ash tries to keep one hour of history, but what if, what, what happens with the old data? So uh, uh, the old data will be, uh, let me just look into the Ash. So there is a, actually, uh, there is a parameter which controls this. Uh, Oracle uh, um, will uh, save every 10th sample you know, when you sample 3,000, 6,000 times over an hour, it will sa save 360 samples on disk, right? So it doesn't want to save everything on disk for historical reasons because it just takes too much space, right? And so instead of the V$ view, it will use the DBA hist active ses history, right? So it's, this, it's, a, it's a similar looking view, but now this is in stored on disk in the AWR repository, right? But then because it only takes every 10th sample, now an existence of a record in here will roughly mean 10 seconds of response time was consumed by, by this user and the SQL ID and so on. Okay, so. Right, so DBA hist active session history is similar. Okay, and it stores information on what is whatever, you know, until whatever is the end of your AWR retention. So if you allow AWR data to be around for 60 days, then this view also uh, has data, you know, uh, for 60 days of history. Okay, so so that's the intro, so I'll, I'll move on to actually using the scripts now. So uh, as, I'm, as I said, uh, let me, um, and by the way, you know, before I go on, active session history requires diagnostics pack license, right? Interestingly, it doesn't need tuning pack, but just querying it, but usually people buy this together, right? So, okay, so I'm going to start from um, uh, Ash top then. So, uh, you know, you can open up documentation and, and see the V$ active session history view and understand what the columns mean there, right? I'll just use some of those. So uh, let me just uh, log in as this user. Okay, so I have a little benchmark running here. So if you open up the Ash top, it's actually in the Ash subdirectory, but I have like a sim link there as well. So, um, so uh, many of my scripts have some sort of uh, documentation inside them, right? So if you wonder how a script works, open it up and see if there's documentation in there. If not, search from my blog, right? Or watch my videos, okay? So basically, I, I can run Ashtop with four parameters, four arguments, 
what do I want to top and group by and what records I'm interested in and you know what time range am I interested in okay so for example I can just say ash um, ash top uh, let's say um, what is the top uh, weight event and I'll just say I, I don't care who waits I want all sessions and let's take last I don't know a last uh, five minutes so this is from the time range and this is to the time range okay so now I'm just running a group by a query against Ash it's it's not actually Ash is very fast because it's in memory but I have a heavy benchmark running because I wanted to show some problems here so that's why it's it's a, it's a bit slow uh, you see uh, this tells me top weight events right that in the last five minutes this database you know uh, whenever you know all the active sessions which we saw in the last five minutes or which we sampled you know 43 percent of time uh, those sessions were waiting for db file sequential read wait event and that's uh, that's uh, you know about 500 seconds of response time it's why it's the count star is 504 and that means 504 seconds of response time roughly has has uh, went on that has gone on that okay and because and so that we can also translate that that if if in the last five minutes we've spent about 500 seconds so this is about i don't know in last five minutes this is about um eight minutes worth of weight events of this weight event then uh, then uh, uh, you know that on average that means that on average the active sessions or, or, or on, on average the number of active sessions who were waiting for this wait event in the last five minutes it was 1.7 so that on average uh, we had 1.7 sessions at any time waiting for this wait event um, what is null Actually, just to explain what the null here means or the empty record for the wait event, it's CPU usage. Because if you're not waiting for anything, then Ash is sort of smart enough to clear the wait event and it, it will just show, uh, you know, it shows null here, right? Because you're not waiting for anything. So if you want to actually see the on CPU here, it would, um, it would um, you know, you have to add a column called session state as well. So now the group by will do a session state, um, you know, as well. You see, so this is the session state column and this is the wait event. So you see, uh, in the last five seconds or in the last five minutes now, uh, we see that 22% of time the session was on CPU, at least as far as Oracle or Ash, Ash thinks. Um, and and, and if, I, if it translate this to average active sessions, it means that on average, there were 1.8, so sorry, on average, there were 0 0.8 sessions uh, waiting or running on CPU. So in the ideal world, you would go and run top in the OS and you would see that, yep, or, you know, when, when you add together all the CPU usage of all the Oracle processes, it's about 80% of a single CPU. If you see like 5.0 here, it would mean that five CPU cores were, were busy in total, uh, you know, with this, uh, this activity. Okay. Um, I'll answer about the first scene and last scene later. So these are different. Um, so it, this is, this becomes use, useful in diff, in some other scenarios. Okay. So um, and um, and um, so uh, so um, what else? So let me uh, you know because um, um, well actually let's let's uh, well let's use. Um, uh, session state well actually I have a column called uh, so this is now the beauty of having your own script right so I have a script called uh, I have a column called event 2 because I'm too lazy to kind of type both of these things in then event 2 it's a, like a derived column in my script that will just uh, you know uh, it will show CPU oops you see it shows CPU instead of null right in here okay so um, before I go on with more demos, I'll just show you. Um, uh, 
how this works. So this I'm using a a um, uh, I'm using um, SQL Plus, and this works in SQL Developer as well. Although the formatting, I think it's not not as, as perfect, but uh, but you see, this is uh, um, this is the query. I have a lot of extra derived columns here, and uh, and that's the end. So it's not a very long script. But what I wanted to show you here is that you see this query, particular query, queries uh, uh, v, uh, GV dollar active session history, right? It selects from GV dollar active session history. It does a join as well. And you see, this is, you know, the argument one goes here. So whatever I want to group by will go here. Uh, whatever I want to filter by goes here. And the timestamps, you know, sample time goes, you know, these are the, the, the last two arguments. So basically, this is how I achieve dynamic, um, dynamic mess of this script. Okay. Um, so, uh, uh, so basically, let's you know, as you saw, this database was pretty slow, right? And uh, and uh, you know, because I have a benchmark running, so uh, um, I can actually show you that. So I'm using the Swing Bench benchmark, a tool. It's it's a free tool uh, written by Dominic Childs. So if you Google that, then you'll see. So and, and this benchmark allows me to run a lot of different transactions, and some of the queries are pretty heavy, right? So uh, but um, let's use Ashtop for finding out what's going on. Okay, so my database is pretty slow, and you see, uh, if you see the transactions per second, you know it's pretty low. It's like four, two, zero. So it doesn't get too many transactions done, right? It's busy. Um, transactions per minute is only two two hundred, so it doesn't get too many of these queries done. So basically, the simplest approach what you do with with Ashtop is is exactly this. Hey, let's see what the top wait events are, and let's see whether we are waiting for a lock a lot, whether the archiver is stuck. You know, do we see this wait event, or you know, are we waiting for I/O, or are we burning a lot of CPU? But if you look into here, you see this is I/O, top wait event forty one percent I/O, uh, another twenty seven percent I/O, another ten percent I/O. Right, these are all IO wait events. So I could even just do, I don't know, session state wait class here if I wanted to, if I don't want to calculate myself. So let's session state. That would show like, uh, uh, it's like 62, 72% of this database response time spent on, you know, waiting for IO, right? So let's, let's, um, Let's drill down into that. Let's see who is doing or who is waiting for IO a lot. Okay, you see, now I, d I did a, a group by weight class, so that will tell me 78% user IO, only 19 on CPU. So let's drill down into this, right? So let's now go to the filter. Okay, so instead of looking into all records, I'm gonna say this weight class equals user IO. So it's like, hey, I don't care about CPU or comment for now or anything else. Let's look into user IO. Let's see who waits for the user IO the most. I have to put it in, in double quotes because this is all one, you know, second argument, right? Because there is a space in between, right? Um, SQL Plus would misunderstand and would, would think that this is a third argument. So that's why it has to be in double quotes, right? But when you, when you save this, these commands and, you know, keep them in your notes, it's easy to, you know, come up with them, right? So let's say, and now, you know, if I'm looking into user IO, let's, let's use event two here. And let's say, uh, I don't know, username. So now I'm looking into IO wait events only, and I'm doing a, dif doing a different group by. I'm, I'm also looking who is the top user. I see it looks like the top user is SOE, which is my benchmark user. Right. Well, I can go further. I can say, okay, so uh, let's see what is the SQL ID. Let's say module as well. So this uh, benchmark is instrumented well. It actually populates the module and action and in in the session info whenever it does something. So um, and this this is good. Okay. So uh, 
now we are getting a bit better breakdown because here we saw okay it's all uh, all the um, uh, the the you know this is the user the benchmark user is using most of the I await or causing most of them and now when I go into more granular more detailed breakdown I see that hey this guy's sort of these two guys sort of stand out right so there is one one you know there are a lot of smaller ones which also cause some I await but the sales rep query this is this is the module that does direct path reads and when when you kind of uh, uh, highlight all sales rep queries you see it uses some more different weight events here as well and when I go now I can scroll right you see I also see the SQL ID okay so the top out of all IO weight events you know user IO weight events I, I you know I find you know the top consumers and uh, it looks like this is the top guy so now I could go to, I don't know, SQL ID. Um, let's see what kind of query is it, right? I found the SQL ID and then I query V$ dollar SQL to find what kind of query this is. So that's the query. And, but what I'm more interested in right now is that, uh, is it executed super frequently or is it, is it, a, is it like one long running query or is it executed, uh, uh, you know, infrequently? Uh, sorry. Let me try try again. Is it like is it a short query which runs very frequently, or is it a long running query which is executed only a few times, right? So um, you might might look into this first. You see uh, distinct execution scene in Ash because we don't we don't query everything. I mean we don't uh, save every query execution. We only sample every second. We haven't seen you know we only have sort of seen twenty one executions in the last 21 different executions of this query in the last um, five minutes, right? Because I'm querying last five minutes. And you see, the first time we saw that during the last five minutes and the last time we saw it, that, you know, this, uh, um, we'll, we'll see this here as well, like the, this boundaries, right? However, V$ SQL doesn't look into last five minutes. It takes, you know, it, it, it just reports whatever this cursor has. This cursor maybe was loaded in there into the cache like two weeks ago and has been accumulating these numbers two weeks for, you know, uh, for two weeks now, right? So that's why tools like AWR and, and StatsPack will take a snapshot and take, then take another snapshot, uh, snapshot an, an hour later and show you the deltas, right? But anyway, so this is not the topic for today. So, but what I really want to know is that what's this, what is this query doing? So it's been executed 400 times since the, this cursor was loaded in cache. Um, and I know how much CPU it has uh, uh, cost overall, uh, or how much CPU it has used, how much response time, elapsed time it has used over all these 400 executions. And that's why I um, calculate, this allows me to calculate that this query uses 28 seconds of elapsed time, you know, uh, per execution. And it uses eight seconds of CPU per execution. So this looks like it's a fairly long running query, right? Okay. So it, it looks like it's a fairly long running query. And basically this query should also be monitored as well. So, uh, because it's it's a fairly long, it run, you know, it, it causes, eight, it uses eight seconds of CPU, um, eight, well, a bunch of IO weights as well. So this is not per execute. So this is total. So so this is a fairly long running query. Um, uh, we could um, go and um, uh, you know go to SQL monitoring and look into the execution plan, right? So let's actually I'm gonna click on that. So I think I'm sure it's gonna take a while to open up. And uh, so uh, so uh, monitor SQL. I, I think this will take ages to, to uh, uh, open up. So, you know, we already talked about SQL monitoring in the previous hacking session. So I'm going to leave this on, on the back burner. So, but I do know that uh, the most of IO is caused by this uh, SQL ID, this 29, whatever, and it's a long running query and it comes from this module, right? So 
I'm not going to start tuning this query here because this is out of the scope of this, this hour here. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve this performance problem just by turning off this particular query. So I'm not going to run this query anymore, right? So I'm going to kill the benchmark um, and I'm going to, you know, restart the benchmark uh, without that uh, bad query, right? Um, so, uh, so, so then all my stuff should work faster, uh, all my demos. And so uh, you see uh, when you look into SQL monitoring, now it opened up because it's a long running query, right? And, um, and then uh, um, we should see the plan and then so on in there, right? Um, let it load slowly, okay? So I'm going to run the benchmark again without this bad query and this now should be more OLTP-like, okay? So this troublemaker is gone uh, or, you know, one of the top IO consumers is gone and now all the other transactions, all the smaller transactions have more, uh, um, more uh, resources for themselves. And you see uh, now, you know, you see we already are doing like tens of transactions per second. And it's over a thousand transactions per minute. Previously, previously this was like between zero and like three or something, and, and per minute was two hundred or something like that. So now you see we are getting much more transactions done. Okay, and um, and when I open, when I run Ash stop again, let me just take last last minute only. So this old data goes away. But well, actually, let me let me do this. So let me let me get leave. Let me leave last five minutes. You know, because sometimes you take a whole hour, right? Or sometimes you even take a whole day when you use the historical one, right? But you see, um, I still have. Let me see what the current date is. So current date is twelve thirty-five. I'm taking the last five minutes. I still see this some of this query here because you know. Because the early, you know, the, the um, like the, the five five minutes of history covers some of this activity, what this query did, right? But this is uh, let me actually run it once more. So the sales rep query still shows up a little. It's interesting. Um, you see, it's twelve thirty five thirty three. You see all the other queries, you know, in the last five minutes, the last time they've seen is 35, 35, 35, and so on, right? But this old query, which I now canceled, you see, even though we've seen it executing earlier, the last time we saw a sample running this query was, you know, 12.33, right? So this allows you, when you, especially when you look into like a whole hour or a whole day or something, it allows you to sort of see, you know, did we always see this query running or did we only see it like during a few minutes few minute time, you know, it was there like a spike or something. Okay. Oh, this guy still loads. Well, you know, today is not the SQL monitoring session, so let it load. Um, okay. So um, we are getting much more work done now, right? You see uh, 3000 transactions per second instead of like 200, right? So, um, and let's look into this uh, general profile again, you know, event two, one equals one. Okay, now the general profile is, uh, well, we are getting much more work done, you know, uh, so uh, this profile is, you know, well, looks pretty normal, right? So, um, and uh, um, so, um, and when I look into, I don't know, um, Oops, oh, sorry, uh, it's a wrong, uh, I just want everything and let's just say, let's take uh, um, event. Um, so let's add a few more columns as well, actually. So, uh, so uh, um, let's end, uh, yeah, just to keep this narrower, I'm gonna remove the mod, well, I should, I'll keep it because I, I need it for one reason. So. Again, whatever columns you have in Ash, you, you describe the VTOL active session history, these columns you can put into this query. You know, you can group by anything you want. 
and in this case I also added SQL operation name right so uh, um, and and I'll see there are uh, apparently different modules this is by the way happens probably the enterprise manager screen trying to pull in um, you know the uh, and the enterprise manager express trying to pull in their SQL monitoring report but as far as, as far as my benchmark goes you see um, there are now some there is a select statement for doing new orders and so on okay so I'll ignore this enterprise manager one let's look into this guy let's say that you know so this guy seems to be executed the most frequently as well so let's say that I want to like optimize the system f further and let's look into this guy. So this uses uh, a significant amount of database time, right? Average active sessions at any point on, a point on average, uh, like 0 0.8 sessions were actively running this statement, this SQL ID, you know, for this module. Okay, so uh, let's look into SQL ID. Let's query with our SQL, okay? So now this query seems slightly different because you see how many times it has executed, right? So again, this, you know, maybe a very old cursor, maybe it was loaded like three months ago, uh, but you know, I can just wait for a few seconds and run it again. And you see, while I was talking, it, it was executed about 2000 times more, right? So it went from this to that. So, and on average, you see, on average, we used like one millisecond of CPU, uh, per execution and 39 milliseconds of total elapsed time per execution. So this query, this query is not monitored anymore. I cannot run SQL monitoring. I mean, SQL monitoring doesn't kick in for this query. So you see, finally, the previous SQL monitor opened, right? So this is for the long running query, which ran for 46 seconds. Um, that's why SQL monitoring automatically kicked in after roughly five seconds. And now you have all this nice info about how many rows were processed and, you know, joined and stuff like that. And in addition to that, you have this column. So SQL monitoring shows you this column that, uh, you know, that we used this much time for waiting, you know, 34 seconds for waiting for IO, 9 seconds for CPU. And it gives you a breakdown here. So this is now a breakdown of this time that which execution plan line used most of it. Right, and uh, and uh, you see uh, four seconds uh, of CPU, four samples, roughly four seconds of CPU was spent scanning this table, and uh, 36 seconds roughly of time was spent direct path read on direct path read weights. So you see, this is like a great way to profile execution plans um, to see, you know, on which execution plan line, which number. Did we spend most of the time so that showed up in oracle 11 so that's really powerful and uh, this is not a sql monitoring session but what i want to sh say here is that this column here this activity column this breakdown actually comes from ash itself and we'll use it because this query this query what i'm looking into right now it runs too fast it's not monitored so how would i drill down into that query itself Right. Let me describe with our active session history. So I described with our session active session history, and you see we have columns, these columns called uh, um, SQL plan line ID operation and options. So what that means is I could do, you know, I know the SQL ID of interest. I could run ash top like this. Hey, look into last five minutes. Only show me where the SQL ID is this, right? Only show me this, that now I'm just drilling down in last five minutes. <clears throat> I'm drilling down only into this SQL ID. I don't care about anything else, right? So, uh, and this shows me the way to ends. And now I can add this column to so what I mentioned. I can say SQL plan operation, SQL plan options. Let me actually, instead of a comma, I'll just uh, um, add a space 
you'll see in a minute. <laughs> um, um, oh, let's just add a colon here. So, oh, dash. let's do it like this. So I'm just doing a group by different columns. And you see, um, since Oracle 11, we have these columns which tell us which execution plan and operation type it is. I'll actually see that, you know, most of the time, this SQL ID in the last five minutes, 82% of its, its act active time, it was waiting for this wait event while it was doing table access by index row ID. And then 14% 14 of time, uh, this query was doing waiting for this wait event, uh, you know, for, for on and uh, SQL plan operation like this, right? So I could even like add, oops, SQL plan line. I can add SQL plan line ID here as well. So this is the actual execution plan line ID, you know, what you see in the plan, right? So plan line number 10 and so on. So I could look into the execution plan and actually, uh, you know, see exactly which, which execution plan line has this, uh, these weights. And this is exactly what Ash does, or sorry, what the SQL monitoring does here. It takes this info from, info from Ash. So when the query is long running, you would, you would easily run SQL monitoring if, you know, if the query is still running, right? But if the query has finished a long time ago and you don't have a SQL monitoring report, or it's a really short running query, so that there is no SQL monitoring at all, then you can use Ash. And obviously I'm too lazy to write this stuff manually. So uh, um, instead, let me just remove the, I have a script called ASQL mon. So it's like Ash, take, take SQL monitoring related data from Ash, right? And, um, and uh, it, it, it's a slightly different syntax. So it takes, look into the script and you'll see, it takes the SQL ID of interest and the plan hash value, but I'll just take all plans, right? So, so uh, it doesn't show you everything what uh, SQL monitor does, but it shows you the crucial info that where, in which execution plan lines is most of the time spent. So, uh, so uh, you see, um, basically I'm going to Ash, I'm only looking for this SQL ID, of in samples, and then I'm doing a group by by the SQL plan line ID, uh, and I join this to V dollar SQL plan, right? I join this to the actual execution plan, right? In V dollar SQL V dollar SQL plan, and in this case, I see that yeah, I mean, um, most of the time, you see, most of the time uh, is spent, like on ninety percent, ninety nine percent of time, really, if you add it together is spent on the execution plan line number 10, the table access, you know, by index row ID. You know, we are reading table blocks after we have gotten the row ID from index. And you see, why do you see three lines here? Well, it's because most of the time, or so, a little bit of time, 2% has, we've been on CPU while doing this. But most of the time, 82%, we've been waiting for DB file sequential read, you know, on this plan line. So basically, this script allows you to um, either look into very short-running queries, you know, find for oppor find opportunities to, uh, you know, measure and optimize OLTP queries, you know, without having to trace all of them, right? Or when you have a query which already which ran very slowly over overnight, and when you got to the office, it was aged out from Vidal or SQL Monitor, then you can just uh, you know, look up the SQL ID and, uh, and uh, you know, run a historical report like this. So let's see if there is anything else of interest. Um, so uh, warehouse order query, let's see what is this guy. So um, if I run SQL ID, it's, uh, well, it seems to be a bit, well, two seconds, three seconds per execution on average, elapsed time. So that's, well, it's a fairly short query as well. So, and now when I run ASQLMAN, 
you see it's different. So it's a different plan and it says that this particular plan across all the executions of the SQL ID in the last five minutes, uh, you know, we've seen that most of the time we've been waiting for DB file parallel read, um, you know, under this number six, right? Um, uh, doing table access again. So I would look into, I would need to look into the filters that whatever, you know, why are we, you know, reading so much stuff from the table? Perhaps we can add a few more columns into the index so that we don't read blocks from the, the table just to filter more stuff out. Because all the filtering should happen in the index. And, uh, you know, only, you know, once we found, once we have applied all the filters of interest, then we go to the table. Anyway, so that's a SQL tuning topic. Um, so yeah, so there is a question, are the scripts available? Yes, exactly. Just go to my blog, click on download. You go, it sends you to, Git, to GitHub. All my scripts are downloadable. Um, I wouldn't be show, showing them otherwise, right? Okay. So, um, and, um, so, uh, I showed you a couple of things, Ashtop and ASQL man. Um, with Ashtop, I'll just go back to, to here for a moment. Um, so, uh, you don't have to, you don't have to look into SQL IDs or anything. You can just say, let's do this once more. Let's say, well, actually let's start from SQL, um, SQL ID, right? Um, I'll demo you something, uh, you know, this is just top SQL, right? And, uh, um, you know, it's again a group by SQL ID. I don't care about the weight event. I don't care about the username. As long as anybody was running this SQL ID, I want to see that. And, but interesting here is SQL ID is null in some cases. So what does that mean? Right. I'll just take more, a bit more data. So S SQL ID is null in some cases. Well, let's drill down. If you want to drill into SQL ID, where SQL ID is null, we just say SQL ID is null, right? Let's only look into these records where SQL ID is null. Um, so uh, username, session, type. So uh, let's do a group by username. Let's see what users and session sessions are having null SQL IDs. And you see, uh, there are a lot of... Um, or some of these SQL IDs are null because it's a background process. It actually makes sense. I mean, background processes also have sessions and when they are actively doing stuff, it shows up in Ash, but they're not really running SQL, SQLs usually because, you know, log writer doesn't have to run a SQL statement to write something to disk. DB writer does not have to issue some sort of a insert statement to write stuff to disk. The, you know, these uh, background processes at low level, they just use the C APIs directly. They don't, they don't do, you know, use SQL. So I don't, you know, so that part of this thing is explained by that. Yeah, background processes, they do have activity. They, they, they are active, obviously, every now and then, but um, they don't use SQL. But let's focus into foreground then only. Let's uh, you know ignore the backgrounds. We know why they are now. You know, you see, interestingly, our benchmark user. This is a regular application user. Uh, this guy, um, uh, uh, you know, has a lot of uh, SQL IDs null while it's doing something. So let's focus on this guy. We'll just say, <laughs> well, let's just I'll just say, uh, and username equals Zoe. Let's focus on this guy only. Let's only look, okay, so this user, what is this guy doing? Okay, in some cases it's running a PLSQL statement. It's actually when you directly call a PLSQL package, you know, with some sort of a direct API uh, from Oracle Forms or whatever, you won't see a SQL ID, uh, you know, show up. Uh, if you use a, you know, a, so, so that's one reason, but that's a very small uh, case. You see, in some cases, the SQL op name is null as well. You know, this is, should be insert or update or delete. I mean, what, what the hell is going on here? Well, we don't have to guess. We can, we can say top level call name, right? So uh, um, this tells us, uh, is it like some sort of a describe operation or, or uh, uh, you know, log in, log off? And stuff like that. And you see, 
Uh, so V8 bundled exec, this is uh, since, or, since OCI version 8, where you can bundle together open curves or pars, execute, you know, and this multiple commands into one network packet, you know, one network, network round trip. You can bundle this together. Before in Oracle 7, you had to send an open cursor, was one round trip. Another, then you send uh, pars, another round trip. Then you send execute, and then you started fetching and so on. But since Oracle 8, you can bundle this together. So that's why it shows that. Um, but you see, most of the time, we've been doing commits. So we haven't really ran a SQL because you can use a direct commit API in Oracle. You know, you call OCI commit, right? That will just send a commit API call to Oracle. It doesn't send you a SQL statement uh, with commit in it. It actually sends a direct API call, right? So, uh, uh, so, uh, so that explains, you know, large number of these weights. A lot of these times, uh, my sessions, my benchmark sessions were active. Uh, actively doing something, their SQL ID was null because they were not running SQL. They were just uh, waiting for this direct commit to finish, right? And you know, you can now take it further. Well, let's say, okay, and top. Well, actually, I'm I'm too lazy to even add this. Let me just add. Um, I'll add uh, uh, event wait event here. You see commit if I add a wait event and I do a further group by previously it was 92% was waiting for commit but now we break it down further right 86% of this this uh, these samples here uh, we were waiting for log file sync because of the commit but also a bit of time we were on CPU while we were doing the commit because you know doing a commit also takes a bit of CPU you have to notify the you know whatever checks you have to perform whatever whatever you have to do in uh, in the undo segment headers, um, commit clean out uh, of latest blocks and stuff like that. And then, uh, you know, then you have to also send a message to log writer, right? So that obviously takes a bit of CPU when you do a lot of, lot of commits, right? So um, hopefully this was a, <laughs> um, a, a intro to uh, what Ashtop can do. Um, I'll show a few more high level things about Ashtop um uh, because uh you know it's five minutes bef uh, <laughs> up until I, I sh i'm supposed to finish but I'm, i think i'm gonna go over time again surprise surprise and i'm gonna upload the video to youtube so if you have to go you can, you'll, you'll you'll see it anyway um so i think i'm gonna kill my benchmark because i want these queries to run faster um uh, Okay, here it is. Yes, Ellison, uh, I, I will talk about Ash weight change, definitely, so that I want to get there as well. So, uh, but you know, th those people who have to leave, I'll, I'll show you one last thing, which, which applies to all of my Ash scripts, or most of them, or many of them, let's put it this way. Ash top queries V$ active session history from memory, right? And it only gets this, um, um, you know, last hour of data. Right, but what if I want? What if I want to go into, you know, further into distance? You know, I want to go back in time, right? More back in time. So for every script, what I'm showing here, Ashtop uses the V dollar view. Dashtop is the historical version, which goes to the DBA hist view, and this guy now sees much more more history depending on how long my uh, uh, AWR retention is. Okay. And uh, so, and that's especially useful if I want to look into something like, hey, I had a batch job. I had a batch job which was slow, uh, you know, uh, a few hours ago, or, or maybe last Wednesday it was slow. I want to see what's going on. So, uh, Ash, so basically, I'm going to change this to dash top. So now it goes to DBA hist views. And both of my scripts, you know, Ash top and dash top, they support this syntax as well. So you, um, Oops, sorry about that. Let me let me simplify this whole thing a little. So I'm gonna go back uh, one equals one. Um, I'm gonna simplify this a little so it's not that much stuff to absorb. I guess um, 
so uh, so that um, so I uh, so uh, so that I don't have to use sys state here, right? I just do it because it's convenient and I'm lazy. Uh, you know, you, instead of sys state, you can just use a date or timestamp syntax here, or like a two date something or whatever, whatever, right? So um, this stuff has to be in double quotes because there is a space in between, right? So uh, let's look into what happened today morning. You know, uh, let's say. Uh, so this this info has aged out from Ash from the V dollar view, um, but in the DBA hist version, it's there. So uh, let me just say, um, um, let's just do this. Uh, so this is where the first scene and last scene become more interesting as well. Let's say I don't even know exactly when when this thing ran, and I'm gonna say show me everything from uh, uh, from 6 a.m. to 12, right? Okay, and you see now I'm taking like a whole six hour period and it tells me like the total activity is seen over time. Um, and that's where the first scene and last scene comes into play. It's like, uh, um, you see, here we have this Oracle shared server process has used some executed by system has used some time and uh, uh, apparently the first time we saw it was 7.31 and the last time we saw it, it was at 11, 11 o'clock, right? Uh, so sometimes this allows us to zoom in into a narrower time range, right? Uh, of course, if this thing is executed once per hour or something, then you might see first and last like every hour. I mean, it, it, would, it, would, it would cover the whole time range. But here is apparently some sort of data generator, right? Well. The data generator has ran today morning from 6 a.m. to 6.43 a.m., right? So, uh, um, so uh, you know, you see there has been like a spike, perhaps, right? And now if I want to zoom into this guy, I could actually say, okay, so let's, let's, let's zoom into what this guy was doing. So uh, instead of showing this whole six-hour range, I'll just paste this whole thing in, right? Okay, so now I can zoom in into actually, actually that's data time range of interest instead of looking into like some, you know, a long time, right? And now, now I can just do a further group by perhaps and uh, I don't know, I'll just say where username equals ppcds. Let's say what kind of, what kind of SQL operations it used then, well, apparently alter table and create index. Um, uh, I guess uh, it doesn't even have a show inserts for some reason. Okay, so uh, two things to remember some from here that for every Ash script, what I show, there is a dash script which goes into the DBA hist view. It's just it, otherwise, it's the same, right? So it sees all all your months of history if your AWR retention has that, and you can use you know this syntax if you want. Okay. Uh, uh, Trong asked uh, uh, that, do you have some sort of an underlying function uh, to convert this to an actual timestamp? No, I'm actually using, you see, I can just use select timestamp from dual. Or I can just use select, select date. Uh, so this is just ANSI, ANSI, uh, 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 you know, SQL syntax. So if you look into, if you look into, want to look into the whole day of data, you could just say, you know, this is date. Um, well, you would, might use sysdate minus. Let's let's see. Let's look into yesterday. So uh, 2018, 09, 11, and and the same. I actually have to have have this. So um, because I think this will not get anything. Because it, this defaults to second and minute zero, you know, it's midnight. So it's midnight to midnight inclusive. So I'm going to have to do this. So now we would have one second, first second of this day as well included. Okay. So, um, um, so um, you know, now I'm looking into, looking into what this user did yesterday. Okay. Uh, so this is not the default date format. This is ANSI syntax. So... Uh, uh, it, it, you have to use this ANSI syntax uh, format 
uh, regardless of what your NLS settings are, right? Um, let me just um, and see the lazy. I'll just paste it into chat so there is a blog entry um, which explains this. Okay, um, so uh, so Ash looks into the history, um, Ash top and so on. So I use it a lot nowadays when the customer has Ash, right? And by the way, um, let me just show you what, what's going on. Um, Uh, okay, so I'm um, having some display troubles, troubles, so I'm going to fix this in a second. Come on, okay. When I look into, uh, maybe this is now where the aha moment comes. Um, I'm going to look into an Ash report. This is an old Ash report. Well, Ash report is exactly the same. Let me just show you the top weight events. So top events. Okay, so I have actually zoomed. So it doesn't look so nice, but you see there is a top events, top weight events in this Ash report. Ash report is, a, is, is what I've done here on the screen. Ash report is a bunch of group buys, group by weight event, uh, weight class, right? And the counts, you know, average active session, it's, it averages that. And, and uh, there is now a group by weight event, Parameter one, parameter two, parameter three. Top service module. This is group by service name, group by module, group by action. This is group by SQL up, up name, what I just used earlier. And also I've ran this uh, Ash report saying that, hey, don't take all records, only take those, those records where weight class is application, you know, some application locking weights and whatnot, right? So what I, what I demoed you over the last hour is essentially a low-level version of Ash report. But you can choose whatever columns you want yourself on command line. You know, uh, and uh, that's, you know, that allows me to actually walk you know, step by step closer to the problem when I troubleshoot. Okay. So, um, um, Uh, let's go on and just see what else. Um, I'm going to use dash top now because I have uh, actually, I, I don't think I have to. So dash top. Um, Let's see if I find anything. Um, I'm gonna go into the history and I'll just take the. Wanted to show if there is some shear pool. Yeah, it's in the weight class. Um, just look into a couple of days. Um, so. Uh, um, so let's just take a look into weight class concurrency. Um, you actually have, you know, seen what, but just what you don't normally see from Ash itself. Uh, when you have, I have uh, like extended my scripts or augmented them that, uh, uh when, uh, for some weight events, when you have, a, let's say like a buffer busy weight, I'll actually translate it is that whether it's a file header block, or just a space header block, or it's a regular data block and stuff like that. Um, but what I want to show you is um, because you know these library cache ones and the shared pool ones, which, what you might want to might see, um, uh, these are uh, you know like often related to parsing and stuff like that. So let's see how do you do this. Um, um, in Ash, when you describe Ash. You see, in Ash, you have a bunch of these columns called in something, right? Um, 
think I'm gonna cause some hard parsing problems, so uh, just bear with me. So um, okay, I'm just gonna. I'm not even gonna do any contention, but uh, um, so uh, there are a lot of these in columns, right? That whenever you happen to be in a parse or hard parse or whatever operation, it actually shows you yes or no in here. Okay. So, and I have to now use ash top for. So this is now my, my, my session where I run the loop, which does hard parsing. So see this guy, actually run it. I run it a few more times. Um, hopefully I get some share pool latch contention out of it. This does a lot of hard parses in a loop. Okay. So, and you see indeed, we see some share pool latch contention showing up as well. And now because I have this in hard parse column in here, it shows yes. You see, when we had shared latch pool contention, then uh, uh, then uh, this um, uh, in hard parse is yes, right? And we also had some regular CPU usage as well, apparently. Okay. So uh, um, uh, where I'm getting at with this is that it's it's a, it's too it's too inconvenient or too complicated to uh, um, uh, to uh, kind of put all these columns. What you all the in columns in Ash into this one command line. So I have written there is a column called time model actually. In Ash there is a column called time model, which is a numeric bit vector of in which phase you were. And uh, I have written a little script or a, not, not a script, but the latest version of. Um, The latest version of Ashtop actually shows you the time model name as well. So it actually translates this bit vector to what it actually means, right? And it's so much more convenient to understand, you know, what uh, where your queries are spending time. Um, you see um, uh, time model name. So 1024, this bit means SQL execution. But when you have, you know, uh, 1040, that's 124 plus 16 probably, right? So that this bits. So it's that these samples were in a parse and SQL execution. So this makes uh, uh, life easier, right? Um, so, and uh, let me just see if Dashtop has any anything, anything interesting to show here. Ash is not perfect. Sometimes it shows, shows zero here as well, but I guess this could be some sort of a background process. And, you know, if you're not actually running a SQL statement or, you know, in, in, if you're not in one of these documented stages, then it shows you zero. Um, but you see, uh, if, I just, if I just show that, uh, then, you know, in, there's somebody even here who, who was in the bind. It, it was, we caught them uh, putting bind variables in place and stuff like that. Connection management, that's the interesting part, right? That's when you log in, log out, switch sessions. And when you have a, you know, when you don't use a connection pool or you have like everybody logs in and out for every single query, you see that showing up in the top. Um, and there was one question that why do we have pars and hard pars and SQL execution all at the same line? Well, this happens when, for example, you have a soft pars which turns into a hard pars because you couldn't find what you wanted from library cache. And now, in order to uh, do the hard parse, you have to run some SQLs recursively. You know, maybe you have to query data dictionary. Maybe you have to do dynamic sampling queries before the hard parse can finish. Or the other way is that if you have a SQL statement or PLSQL or something. Um, so here we have like a PLSQL statement which runs SQL as well. If PLSQL runs and then it hard parses a statement, you would see PLSQL execution and uh, you know, uh, well, here we go. No, uh, I guess you don't see it here, but you could see PLSQL execution, which then turns into SQL uh, execution under the hood, which then has to do a hard parse, right? So that's it's because of recursive activity. Okay, um, uh, so that much about Ashtop and Dashtop, and I already showed you the. 
um, as weight change, as, uh, sorry, ASQL one as well, right? Uh, before I move on, I'll actually you know, to the uh, to the low level geeks among you. Um, so this is all Ash, right? You you need to be on Enterprise Edition and you need to have the licenses, right? But actually, um, let me just uh, run uh, I run this one statement again. So my session is twenty four, and this is now a single statement which only does logical IOs. It doesn't do parsing. It's just one long long statement. Session is twenty four, uh, so I can just run Ash top. Of session ID is 24 okay so this session what I'm on this right side this guy here you know the time model is it's running a SQL statement it doesn't do any parsing or, or whatnot so the value the bit value is 124 so you actually can since Oracle 12 I think maybe even 11 but I think it's Oracle 12 you can actually get this uh, without Ash as well so but you have to use an X dollar table. So this is the V dollar session underlying X dollar. So this is the uh, session KSU kernel service user sessions time model bit vector, right? Something like that. So uh, so if I again just use select where the session ID essentially is 24. You see, it's the same number. So you could you could sample that, and even without Ash, you can get this info. Um, 